I mean, I heard about some of these these guys like John the Baptist. He's a Baptist. I found out later on he's Jewish. St. Paul, Jewish? Yeah, Jewish. St. Peter, how can anybody by the name of St. Peter be Jewish? Guess what? I found out they're all Jewish. You know, I grew up in Philadelphia in a Jewish neighborhood. On the other side of the street, that was mostly Gentiles. These poor Gentiles, they would worship a statue. Some of those people had statues in their lawns. At the age of eight years old, I joined the Cub Scouts, which is part of the Boy Scouts. They had a, they have, they still probably have this today, a, a magazine that's called Boy's Life Magazine. And in that magazine, they had the instructions on how to build a uh, crystal radio. I was so excited. It was, it was like I was in heaven with this radio that worked. I would rush home from school and put on the earphones. And I was hearing these people talking about Jesus on the short wave. They were like, at the same time, I was preparing for my bar mitzvah, and my rabbi told me, never believe in Jesus, and never read the New Testament. That's a Gentile book, and Jesus is for the Gentiles. I joined the Navy in 1960 and wound up in a, a drill hall with 400 guys. Now, this is the first time in my life I was ever away from my mother and father. They taught me how to smoke a cigarette. Uh, you know, oh, I was coughing like crazy. They said, real sailors drink whiskey. And that was burning my throat. I did it because I wanted to be a real sailor. I wound up getting drunk every night. Wound up going out with, with women that I shouldn't be doing. Sometimes deep down inside of me, I was saying, man, this doesn't feel right. Something's wrong here. This doesn't seem right. You see, when you join the Navy, I don't know if they do this today anymore, but this was back in 1960. We were naked, not our hair shaved, and then we went through the line to get our uniforms and stuff. At the end of the line, they said Catholic, Protestant, or Jewish. So they gave you a Bible. I had my Tanakh. I had my little, my Jewish scriptures. And I don't know what you do with the Bible. I thought, you know, it might be like a rabbit's foot, good luck charm, or maybe it'd be like my grandmother's chicken soup. Anytime I was sick, my grandmother said, have some matzo ball soup, have some chicken soup. It'll, I said, will it help? She said, it couldn't hide, you know? I said, well, I have a Bible. Will it help? Well, it couldn't hide, you know? Uh, one of the sailors uh, that I was with in the Navy said to me, you're Jewish, right? I said, yeah. Do you have a Bible? I said, sure, I have a Bible. They gave it to me when I joined the Navy. He said, let me see your Bible. And he turned in my Bible to Isaiah chapter 53. He said, here, read this. I read the whole chapter of Isaiah 53. I said, wait a minute. This sounds like those folks across the street. This sounds like the Gentiles. This sounds like what I was hearing on the short wave. They made a mistake. They gave me New Testament. And my rabbi told me, never read the New Testament. You better take this because this is for you. This is not my Bible. So no, no, look, Hebrew Publishing Company. <gasps> Hebrew Publishing Company. What's, this is crazy. What's Jesus doing in my Bible? He said, well, he's your Messiah. He's my Messiah. I, I, I was shocked. And he said, would you like to read about that in the New Testament? I said, uh, well, I can't read the New Testament because my rabbi told me never read uh, the New Testament. And he looked around over here. I looked over here. And he says, I'll make a deal with you. If you don't tell your rabbi that you read the New Testament, I won't tell him either. I thought about that for a minute. Okay, but I was scared. I thought lightning was going to strike me. I actually thought I was going to be struck by lightning. I expected it to be a Gentile book. I expected it to take place in Rome with a bunch of popes talking about Catholic things and statues. What surprised me is how Jewish the New Testament really is. It's the most Jewish book I ever read. The more I, I, I read the scriptures, the more I, I was, was praying, I realized that inside I was not, not clean. Inside, I had all kinds of anger. I was getting drunk every night. I was going with the women. I was smoking three packs of unfiltered palm all day, coughing like crazy. I was making pretend like I enjoyed it. I didn't want to make pretend anymore. I didn't want to live that way anymore. Now it's three o'clock in the morning. I'm in the barracks, big barracks. And I had a blanket all the way over, and, and the light was shining on the New Testament. And I, I prayed, you know, Baruch Atah, and no, Allah, and Amalek, Allah, Lord, uh, uh, Jesus, I, I'm here. Uh, um, I want to believe in you. And I went to bed. May 16th, 1961, came to faith in, in the Messiah. That's just so important in my life. It's, it's a, 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 a moment that totally, completely changed the revolution of my life. Even if I was the very last person on earth, 
Jesus would still have died for me. And I am confident that when I die, I'll go to be with him.